Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Our show today, religious political strategy, the Vatican, Zhong Nanhai, and the president's office. Uh, and our guest joining us from Taipei, Taiwan, is Dr. Fabrizio Rosato, a return guest to Asian Review. He is currently a Taiwan fellow at National uh, Zhengzhou University in Taipei. Well, let's get right at it, because this is a really interesting topic and, um, and a big one as well. There's been a, a, shall we call it a rapprochement between the Holy See and the Chinese Communist Party, which has resulted in a signed agreement that seems to remain secret, but suggests closer cooperation between these two entities. What's going on? Well, first of all, make, let me make a pontualization. The agreement is provisional. Okay. Uh, but as you say, in Marx, uh, and those are, this, this, that is the term used by the Holy See Press Office, in Marx, the rapprochement between the two sides. So, yes, it is a historic agreement uh, under many respects. Uh, Signally, it is historic because the consequences of it will unfold over the next decades. Uh, as you say, the content of the agreement has not been revealed, so uh, this creates the opportunity for narratives about the agreements to, to be uh, propagated to the public. Uh, but so, uh, both the Holy See and the Communist Party of China uh, and, and Beijing uh, expressed satisfaction about the agreement, but we don't know the specifics. Well, so why, don't, why don't they want to analyzing. release the contents Sorry. of the agreement? Sorry? Why don't they want to make known the contents of the agreement, the provisions of the agreement? Well, because uh, it not doing that uh, allows both sides to uh, contend that they have an upper hand in the, in the agreement. Mm. Uh, specifically, we don't know, we know that the Pope, and he said it in an interview to the, to, in his letter to the Chinese Catholics, which, which was issued soon after the agreement, that the Pope will name the bishops. But what about the selection process? We are looking at the you know, the black box here, uh, we don't know who's going to select the bishops, probably uh, the, the Communist Party. Uh, we don't know the criteria for selection. Uh, the Pope say that he hopes that there will be good shepherds, or I share his hope, but, and then uh, we don't know if, whether the naming of the bishop would be just a, a rather stamping by the Vatican of decisions that uh, were made, uh, will be made in Beijing, or uh, the Vatican will have an actual say or even a veto power uh, in the selection of, of bishops. So we it's... know that seven bishops that were excommunicated well, uh, because they were adhered to the uh, official, so called official church, the church, Catholic Church in China is divided, was divided uh, between two segments the clandestine underground church, loyal to Rome and the official church, which uh, operates in the open because it is uh, uh, under the control and the authority of the, of the government. So uh, seven bishops of the official, of the official church uh, who were previously exonerated, who were previously excommunicated, sorry, were uh, exonerated from ex uh, excommunication from, by the agreement, and one of them, will even participate in the World Synod of Bishops mm. in October. Uh, and actually, this is a disturbing signal. Um, first of all, uh, in the aftermath of the, of the signing of the agreement, the, um, 
uh, the Conference of Chinese Bishops and the uh, Patriarchal Association of Chinese Catholics uh, named the two bishops that will go to, uh, to Rome. Uh, and this is a uh, solution of continuity with respect to what uh, the Vatican used to do, both in 1998 and 2005, uh, John Paul II and Benedict XVI chose the Chinese bishop that were invited to the World uh, Synod, and, uh, well, they were invited with no authorization from Beijing. This time, it's the other way around. Well, let me jump in uh, here, because there's something I think we need to clarify here. Is the, is the party, the Chinese Communist Party, going to select the bishops, and then the pope will give final approval? Or is the pope going to select the bishops and the party will give the final approval? That's a very good question. Uh, the, the most honest answer is we don't know. Mm. You know, because the thing to me is have a very interesting model, and I, I can't, I, I, I'm not sure I understand it as well as maybe I should. But it seems that there is a very cooperative relationship between the Vietnamese Communist Party and the Vatican on the selection of Vietnamese Catholic bishops. And yeah, but in that case, we know how it works. How does it work? How does in that it work? case, the, the church comes out with a set of candidates, uh -huh. then the government chooses one, and Rome and the Pope appoints the, the chosen candidate. Uh, oh, when it comes to China, it seems to be the other way around. Oh, uh, again, it seems to be, because we don't know what's in the, the, the text of the agreement. There's so a lot that's not clear China, about this whole process, is there? Yeah, isn't there? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. And then I'd I, I like to move on, because i got a whole lot of questions for you. Okay. Very good. So, uh, and, and another element of difference between Vietnam and China is that uh, the Vietnamese ne government never created uh, parallel uh, church structures loyal to the government. While in China, there is a, a Patriarchy Association of Chinese Catholics and a Chinese Conference of Bishops. And, you know, the day after the agreement, both bodies released, issued a public note, uh, which mm, should sound disturbing for Rome and, uh, and also for the Catholic flock. Uh, the note reads that we love the country and the church in this order, and we will co carry forward the principle of independence, which means that the Chinese Catholic Church is independent, uh, a.k.a. Uh, loyal to the government, and the concept of sinicization of religion. Uh, I so, see. And that's a, that's a big religion. goal of Xi Jinping's, isn't it? To sinicize all religions. It doesn't matter if it's Buddhism exactly. or Catholicism or Protestantism or whatever. He wants to sinicize them. This is straight from uh, Xi Jinping's uh, playbook. Uh, and then the note concludes saying that uh, the Chinese Catholic Church will remain on the path that leads to a socialist society. Mm. Well, you know— uh, So they're basically saying— Yeah, sorry. It, it does seem that the Pope's, as I understand the Pope's motivation for this was— um, okay, he says he wants to protect the 10 to 12 million uh, Chinese Catholics. Uh, but does that mean the end of the underground church? And it also seems like the Pope is, uh, the Catholic Church is getting a lot of comp competition from Protestantism because it seems that Protestantism is growing faster in China than Catholicism. Yes. Uh, actually, there aren't so many Catholics in China. We are talking about uh, from 10 to 12 million people. And while uh, Protestantism is growing very fast, uh, right now, as you know, Protestantism is, is heavily persecuted by the government, while uh, the Vatican, with this agreement, hopes to uh, 
uh, gain more freedom of more religious freedom uh, for uh, Chinese Catholics. Uh, the question that should be asked, or one of the questions that should be asked is, what if in uh, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, uh, this is a regime change in China, and the Catholic Church uh, ends up being seen as a uh, former collaborator of the regime. Uh, interesting uh, point. Interesting point. Then the Protestants will, will be the persecuted church. The Catholic Church will be uh, sort of, um, you know, a sort of uh, Christ, uh, franchising control by the Communist Party. So um, let me ask you this highball. This is kind of a little bit of a highball question. Is the Pope selling out, yes. or is he just carrying forth the work of John Paul and Benedict? <laughs> well, uh, the Pope is gambling. He's gambling. Uh, oh, in that's the sense he that is gambling. This is a big gamble. Um, he, uh, in his letter to Chinese Catholics, is he asked them to uh, trust in the Lord of history and the ch uh, church discernment of his will. Uh, well, the meaning of the formula is, well, you know, uh, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Uh, well, you know, it's the same as asking, uh, you know, would you mm, buy a second-hand car from, from Pope Francis? <laughs> well, if I have to buy a second-hand car, <laughs> I would like to see the papers, but we can't, we, we cannot, the papers are, are being kept secret. So, yes, there's a big risk that the Pope is selling out. And, you know, the fact that the um, government-controlled church in China issued that note and that the, 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 the government, the Chinese government, chose the two bishops that will go to the uh, war scene of the bishops, uh, are already pointing to the fact that the, um, Beijing may well have the upper hand in the agreement. You know, it's a, so, I, I get that impression too that Beijing is the the, the Pope is dancing a bit to Beijing's um, tune. But you know, you know something that strikes me about the Pope here. The Pope is an Argentine. Okay, his whole yes. pe his whole background, his, his bishop, archbishop, cardinal, is in Argentina. And to some degree, he buys into um, liberation theology, which has its roots in Marxism and Leninism. And I, I read, uh, in preparing for this interview, I read just the other day, he sent a birthday greeting to the, the creator of liberation theology, who is a Peruvian priest. And yes, Gustavo Gutierrez. So I, I think that, you know, for the Pope to reach out to Beijing, it, it's easier for him than it might be for some other Pope. Um, he's, he's sort of, I won't say that he's totally into liberation theology, but at least he doesn't reject it. Well, we can say that he uh, adheres to a diluted version of liberation theology. A diluted well, version, uh, that's a good point. Own, yes, it's called the Teología del Pueblo, Means, which means theology of the people, and it was its, its main theorist is an Argentinian Jesuit, just like uh, Pope Francis, uh, whose name is Juan Carlos Canone. So uh, the uh, theology of the people uh, calls for attention for the poor, without calling for political liberation of the oppressed people, like the, the liberation theology does. This say, one of the main theorists of liberation theology, a Brazilian priest, um, Leonardo Boff, when uh, Pope Francis was elected, uh, publicly declared that uh, the winter was over and spring was coming. Mm -hmm. But what Pope Francis does is, on the one hand, he condemns liberation theology, condemns liberation theology. On the other hand, he adopts uses its vocabulary. Okay, uh, then, that's, that's a good point. I, will, I, will, I, I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stop right here. We're going to take a one-minute break, and we come back, and we'll finish okay. up this thought. Okay, so Thank you. you're watching okay. Asian Review, and I'm your host, uh, Bill Sharp. My guest today is Dr. Fabrizio Bozzato, coming to us from Taiwan. 
Uh, we are discussing the recent rapprochement between the um, Vatican and Zhongnanhai, the seat of the Chinese Communist government. Uh, later, when we come back, we'll also talk about the ramifications for Taiwan. So don't go away. We have a whole lot yet to talk about. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us, where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Okay, we're back here. Um, this is Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Our show today deals with the recent rapprochement between the Vatican and uh, Zhongnanhai, the seat of the Chinese Communist government. And um, we've been talking to our guest, Dr. Fabrizio Bozzato, who's very knowledgeable about the inner workings of the Vatican. In fact, he wrote uh, his master's thesis about um, uh, the, the uh, papacy, the diplomacy of the papacy. And so we have an extremely knowledgeable guest today who we're really fortunate to have. And uh, just before the break, we were talking about liberation theology, and we had just about finished uh, that part of our discussion, but we decided to hold off just a bit until we came back. So let's turn back to that and finish that up. And um, you were about to make a point when I said, let's take a break here, so let's finish your point. Well, yes. So my point was that, uh, on the one hand, Pope Francis uh, condemns uh, liberation theology. He publicly said that he, he, he does not um, endorse uh, Marxist hermeneutics. Is so uh, even his uh, history as a uh, bishop testifies to the fact that he always publicly opposed it. On the other hand. He uh, adheres to a diluted version of it, which is called uh, Theology of the People, that calls for attention uh, to the poor without calling for, well, let's, let's call it armed insurrection or political liberation. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to understand uh, Pope Francis' uh, political view, we should look at the manifesto for his pontificate, uh, which is the Apostolic Exhortation of Evangelii Gaudium. In, in, in that uh, document, he calls for a uh, um, poor church for the poor. So uh, ch uh, charity, mercy, attention to the poor is at the core of the pontificate. Then I know that many people ask the question, is uh, Pope Francis a Marxist? Well, I would say that he's not, because he's not systematic enough to be a Marxist. Sometimes it's yeah, a it, very it seems interesting to, point. Very interesting point. Yeah, it seems to adopt a Marxist view, a Marxist categories, um, to to and it also uh, found some of his uh, political uh, statements on, on those premises. But is not a Marxist. Does he see reaching out to China as reaching out to the poor? Uh, well, yes. Then, uh, who are the poor? Uh, in his view, uh, for instance, as a European, I know very well that he considers uh, everybody from the developing world a poor, uh, the proletariat, if you want to use Marxist terms, and then the, the Europeans are, are bourgeois. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so his migration, his view of migration is based on that Marxist understanding of the world. Okay. Well, you uh, know, uh, when it comes to China, yeah, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, there seem to be a lot of very similar characteristics between the Vatican and the, and the Chinese Communist Party. They're both very authoritarian. They're both very secretive. Well, yeah, what, Xi Jinping yes. wants to be in power forever, and theoretically, popes are in power forever, although this pope said he would have a very short papacy. Um, 
Yes, but you know, uh, there's a, there are some elements of difference. Um, yes, they're both valuable uh, and very uh, solid institutions. Uh, they both have a strong ideology, but uh, the um, Catholic Church also has uh, the deposit of the faith from Christ. Mm. Actually, going back to the appointments of bishops, there might may be a problem with canon law, uh, canon 377 of the, of the canon law, which is the basic law of the, of the, of the church, uh, postulates that uh, political authorities cannot choose uh, can, uh, the, the bishop, the candidates to bishopric. Um, also, there is something called apostolic succession, which is the, the fundamental doctrine of authority of the church, which says that there's a, a, a direct and uninterrupted uh, you know, line uh, coming from Christ to, the, to the, 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 the Council of the Apostles and to the bishops. So, mm. uh, according to this doctrinal tenet, bishops must be chosen and appointed by uh, the successors of uh, the apostles, and, and the successor of Peter, the head of the apostle, is the pope. Now, here we have an a, a, a interference, <laughs> let's call it like that, uh, or an injurious within the, the, the principle of uh, apostolic succession, because the, the Communist Party uh, intends to choose the candidates to episcopate. Uh, now, does Pope Francis have a problem with that? Apparently not. What he's asking uh, the Catholic flock to do is to trust him. But, you know, uh, mm. that, so this is why I say it's gambling. Uh, it might also be that uh, he, he wants to, is willing to take upon himself the blame for making a compromise with the Communist Party, so then his successors, the next pope, uh, won't have to deal with the problem anymore. But, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's move uh, on here a little yeah. bit, because uh, I, I have a... We, we're, time is fittering away here on us. Uh, let's talk about the papacy of, of uh, Francis. It, you know, it seems to me that, you know, he, he has a very good image and that he's close to the people. He reaches out to the poor. He's the, the people's pope, right? But, you know, um, yeah. he, he's a very simple man. He doesn't like all the regal trappings of the, um, of, of the, of the papacy. Uh, but he's talking about some very controversial issues, like same-sex um, same sex marriage. It seems that he was sort of open to that. The marriage of priests, the return of divorced people to the church. He's very strong on climate change. Um, yes. Yeah, he's got big problems with sex scandals. Um, and, Indeed. And the lingering issues and questions about the Vatican Bank. Um, is this reaching out to China any kind of way of taking attention off of some of these other problems? Uh, well, yeah, it could be a way to uh, offset a serious, severe crisis uh, that the church is undergoing because of the yeah, so the sex scandals uh, with a diplomatic success. Uh, that may work if uh, the agreement will prove effective and, and to work in, to the, the, the benefit of the, the Chinese Catholics. But it could be uh, a case of uh, heterogeneous events in the sense that uh, that a failure to negotiate a good agreement with China would compound with the scandals that the Church is already going through, and that would be a, 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 a public policy disaster an image disaster for, for uh, the church and Pope Francis, uh, given that Pope Francis extremely personalized uh, the church public policy. You know, it seems to me also so, he's incurring a lot of opposition from conservative cardinals. And, and there's an element of the it, church who's really coming, who's, who's very unhappy with him. Yes. Uh, well, in uh, what Pope Francis seems to uh, be intending to do uh, in the face of that strong opposition is uh, just restate his authority. Uh, for instance, um, he chose uh, some 
bishops called for his resignation recently. Mm. It is uh, listed to do so within the Catholic Church, but he, he, he said he was not going to speak one single word about that. And he asked Catholics to pray for the Church, which is under uh, attack from, 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 from the devil. So uh, he, the attack from uh, the devils. Yeah. Yes. So those cardinals <laughs> are forces of evil. Uh, it's a very simple solution to, to, to you know, uh, for facing those accusations, but I, I think it will leave uh, at least a part of the Catholic flock worldwide very perplexed about... Well, um, Let's move on you know, here, um, I, I, because time is frittering away, as I, as I mentioned. Yeah. There, there, we talked about the Vatican, we talked about Zhong Nanhai, the president's office, the president meaning President Tsai Ing-wen of Taiwan. Uh, is, yes. Uh, is the Pope sort of leveraging Taiwan, the Church's relationship with Taiwan, in a way to get what he wants in uh, China? I mean, he's not breaking diplomatic relations with Taiwan. He's keeping diplomatic relations, although at a low level. There's no uh, Vatican ambassador in Taiwan. There's a, a, yeah, the Justice Chargé d'Affaires from the, from the 70s, right, uh, right. thing like that. Is, uh, but, he's still know, keeping I, that formal relationship, even at a low level. Is he, is he just leveraging that relationship with Taiwan in order to make sure he gets what he wants in China? Well, I... Personally, I hope he's doing that, because uh, if were him to were Pope Francis to uh, you know, tell out the, the Taiwan for the sake of or to terminate relations, diplomatic relations with, with Taiwan, for the sake of improving uh, in, uh, left, the anyway. Vatican relation with China, that will be that will do leave the Holy See without any. Uh, leveraging the negotiations. Uh, famously, the, the Communist Party of China for decades has been asking two things to the Vatican as preconditions for starting negotiations, diplomatic relations. Stop interfering in internal affairs of China, which relates to the appointment of bishops, and that, that problem has been uh, solved uh, with, with a, a provisional agreement. And the second precondition is to terminate diplomatic relations with uh, Taiwan. Okay. Well, uh, well, so, yeah. Fab, I Sorry. think we're going to have to stop it here. We're, we're out of time again. Time always goes by very fast in the show, unfortunately. And, yeah. um, but, and okay, just, yes, just the last thing. I don't think Pope Francis is going to terminate relations with Taiwan anytime soon. He's going to keep them as a, as a leverage vis-a-vis uh, -vis China. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and I'm sorry that we got a late start with, due to all our technical problems. And thank you, uh, our viewing audience, for watching us today. Please join us again next week when my guest will be Dr. Mohan Malik, uh, professor at the Daniel K. Inouye uh, Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies. We're going to be talking about the great uh, rethink, I guess is the way we should call it, the great rethink that Australia is undergoing vis-a-vis uh, -vis its relationship with China. So we'll see you then.